The Real Agriculture.com Canola School is brought to you by Syngenta Crop Protection Canada. Lloyd, we're talking today about the diamondback moth. Uh, what is kind of the history of the insect and, and how does it how does it migrate its way through the field? Well, uh, Sean, this, this insect is a worldwide pest. Uh, it occurs on every continent except for Antarctica. And, it, and it's incredibly destructive wherever it occurs. And, and Western Canada is no exception. But our diamondback moth populations, by and large, can't withstand our winter conditions. So our populations arise from wind flow from southern uh, North America every year. The um, moths get blown in on northward trajectory winds from California, from Texas, early in the springtime. And the magnitude of the infestations we get is dependent on when the moths arrive in the springtime, if they come early or come later, and also the extent of the population, how abundant they are when they get blown in. So at this stage of the, the crop cycle, uh, what kind of what kind of damage are we looking for? Uh, how is the insect uh, feeding on the plants? When the crops are in full flower like they are now, most of the population is in the larval stage and they tend to be feeding either on the leaves or right on the flowers. So uh, they, they take on the color of the foliage on which they're feeding. They can be green or they can be yellowish, but uh, they're feeding primarily on the foliage now. Okay, so are they taking like bite sizes out of the leaves or are they chewing on the edges? How, how is it? Uh, they don't tend to be particularly edge feeders on leaves. Uh, generally, diamondback moth damage is uh, circular pieces taken out of leaves. So right now we're looking at a final instar larva. This is uh, about as big as they get. They're uh, ready to pupate fairly soon after they reach this size and they're, they're actively feeding. Most of the leaf material that they consume uh, occurs when they're at this size. So when we're looking at this, how do we know this isn't just some other worm? How do, how, is there something we can, certain identification features for the, for the larva? One easy way to tell, Sean, is the way that they tend to move backwards when they're disturbed, especially on a flat surface. They'll hang by a silken thread often, um, but they'll tend to usually move backwards, flip backwards, side to side like that. And so basically they'll just hang out on the, the back of the leaf or the top of the leaf and just kind of sit there and feed? Right, it, it really depends on the time of day, but uh, most often they're either on the upper surface or the underside of the leaf uh, where they're maybe less, less easily visible by predators and exposed to uh, less heat and, and drying out. So this year it's definitely a problem across Western Canada. Is there a reason that it seems to be worse this year? Uh, I think it is, Sean, because we've had a, l a large population emerging in southern North America, in Texas and California and Mexico, and that uh, served as source populations for our diamondback moth this year. And we also had strong winds from the, from the south to the north bringing moths in large numbers early in the spring. And this occurred right across Western Canada. We began finding them in early May, right from Alberta to Southern Manitoba. So when we're doing our sweeps, what are the thresholds for the diamondback? Well, there are no thresholds that uh, we're using when the crop is in flower like this. But the threshold when the crop is in the pod stage, the vulnerable stage when they can be feeding and stripping the green material off the pod, is 20 to 30 larvae per square foot. Uh, if you want to work that out on a per plant basis, we usually think in terms of two to three larvae per plant as being an economic threshold. Okay, Lloyd, is there any natural predators for the diamondback moth? There are, Sean. There are a number of species that attack diamondback. Things like lady beetles will feed on small larvae, but principally there is a parasitoid, a parasitic wasp that's highly adapted to attacking diamondback moth larvae. The uh, female wasp has a sharp pointed tip on her abdomen and she uses this to pierce into the diamondback larva and insert one of her eggs. And then the uh, egg of the wasp hatches into a, a little larva inside the diamondback and it eats the diamondback from the inside out, eventually killing it. 
Can this be a pretty effective means of control? Oh, it can. Uh, especially in the outbreaks of 2003 and 2005, that parasitic wasp saved Alberta farmers millions of dollars uh, in saved crop losses. Uh, they, when they get to be abundant late in the season, they can completely decimate diamondback moth populations. Mm -hmm.